These basically describe a lot of the beauty of Taiwan. This is like the biggest piece of jade like I've ever seen. It makes me never want to go home. <laughs> I love it. I love Hualien. You're saying like you cannot find jade at Jade Mountain. No, you no? cannot find jade in Jade Mountain. This is, but, 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 like, like, so it is like, are we, is this illegal? Today's guest. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, honestly, I don't really know how to introduce today's guest. And I think that you will understand why in just a few minutes. Hello, I'm Jimmy, and I'm, my now name is the Taiwan rock guy. I'm from the USA, I'm 29, and for now, I just graduated from grad school at, uh, in Hualien at a, at a Donghua University, National Donghua University. I just started making videos, so I just started making YouTube videos about teaching rocks and geology. Yeah, I, I just want to point out, like, we're not talking about the music rock, we're no. talking about, like, the rock rock. I've been learning Chinese and geology, maybe since I was like 13 years old. So why I'm here in Taiwan is that all of my experiences here have been mostly revolved around these beautiful natural landscapes. Like I've lived in Taidong and I've lived in Penghu, which are two like very famous Taiwan spots for awesome landscapes. You know, Penghu's got the cool basalts, the big col columns and stuff, and Taidong's got the, the mountains right by the ocean. You're in this beautiful wedge of flatland in between just these titans, these beasts, like a huge mountain range and the rest of the, the, uh, the ocean there. When I went to college, I became one of my majors and also a dual major. In the, I went to college in the USA. I'm a dual major with geology and Chinese, and my professor was from Taiwan. And so I got to do a exchange program at Donghai University in Taizong for one semester. And that's all I really needed to be like, okay, I don't really wanna, I don't really wanna be anywhere else. So when I graduated from college, I had found any way I could. And I, so I found teaching English first. And then from 2021 to now, I have just been here now. I can teach English, right? But I wanna teach science. So having that opportunity in Penghu pushed me to environmental education and pushed me to Hualien, a place where I hadn't lived before, but I'd visited Taroko once and that, that's all I needed. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that must be like a, a rock lover's mecca, you know? Yeah, it's dude, amazing. it's so crazy. We, we, dude, we're going to so... get into like the, the rocks and, and all of that later. Like, don't worry, we're going to talk about this. I have lived in Taipei for 14 years. Uh -huh. What would you say is like the biggest difference between like Taidong, Penghu and Hualien for a foreigner oh. who maybe want to explore like life outside of Taipei? First thing is the sky. Some nights in Taipei, like, even though it's completely pitch, pitch black in the middle of the night, like you still see that that city aura, you know. Yeah, in, in, it never in the gets air. like pitch black in Taipei. There's like just Seven Eleven signs like everywhere in cabs. Basically. If you want to see just pure empty sky, just pure dark sky, like if you want to get a good look at the stars, these both all these places, these three places are the places to go. The big thing is that you got to have your scooter license, right? A lot, both all three of these places are not super accessible for public transit. Like the streets are pretty much dead empty at like 9 30 10 p.m all these three places i've talked about you have a way closer connection to nature and it's right in front of you i mean even in taipei like you don't need to go too far to be in nature and then you know hualien hualien is i mean taitong's got good rocks but hualien's got the best rocks <laughs> hualien's if you want to see the best rocks ever you got to go to hualien that's the biggest thing and that's why i don't really want to go anywhere else is that or i don't want to really live anywhere else minnesota going back to what you're saying the biggest difference for me and why i love taiwan so much is every day i go out my door in hualien and i see the central mountain range I drive maybe 15 minutes north like in between i live in shoufeng which is by the university in donghua university i look to my east and i see the ocean right minnesota's got a lot of lakes but it's just so flat and um, the landscape just blows my mind when I'm here. And that it's like every single time I look at this landscape, the beauty of Taiwan's mountains, the beauty of Taiwan's oceans, and it's all just condensed in this on this eastern area. It, I, I hate to say this on camera, but it never it makes me never want to go home. <laughs> I love it. I love Hualien. Like it's just so pretty. Of course, I miss my family. Right. <laughs> I miss my family a lot. I love my family, but. I feel like an indescribable feeling when I look at the beauty of the mountains and the ocean in Hualien. The views like pull me in and then it's the people that make me want to stay. Like the people are just so nice and everybody is so kind to you, like no matter what you're doing. Well, I don't think there's any other way to summarize this other than uh, Taiwan rocks. Taiwan does rock. 
Taiwan rocks hard. We're gonna try to dig in a little bit more on what you're actually doing here in Taiwan. I am promoting geology. I'm promoting Taiwan's geology in any way that I can. In the future, I hope to do that through giving tours uh, and leading environmental education trips. Primarily, I wanna be a educator and promoter of the stunning landscape here in Taiwan, particularly Eastern Taiwan, Hualien and Taidong. And also I would say entertainer because uh, <laughs> yeah. you, ha you have an Instagram account, you have a YouTube account, which is focused on rocks. Yes. And it, it does not sound interesting. It doesn't sound entertaining. Like for someone who me, who is like, you know, hated like geography and geology growing whoa, up. Whoa. You didn't say that, we didn't say that before. <laughs> but it is super entertaining and educational Thank you. To, to watch your content. And speaking about entertaining content online, that is something that you can enjoy even more of with the help of today's sponsor, NordVPN. For those of you who missed the opportunity during Lunar New Year, NordVPN still has a great offer where you can not only get a massive discount by clicking the link down in the description or simply by visiting nordvpn.com slash lucas. When you do, you will also receive up to an extra four months of NordVPN as well. And don't forget that you always have a 30 day money back guarantee with NordVPN, which means that you can try it out for yourself 100% risk free for 30 days, which gives you plenty of time to not only use NordVPN together with your favorite streaming service, so you can watch an almost unlimited number of movies and TV shows from all over the world. For example, Rambo Last Blood, which normally is not available here in Taiwan. And at the same time, you can also try out their Threat Protection Pro, so you can witness firsthand how NordVPN makes your internet connection free and more secure since their Threat Protection Pro service automatically blocks any fraudulent websites or any other online threats. Again, if you do want some more information regarding NordVPN, all you have to do is to click the link down in the description or just head over to nordvpn.com slash lucas. But if you do want some more information regarding Taiwan and more specifically the different rocks we have here in Taiwan, then all you have to do is to continue watching the rest of this video. These basically describe a lot of the beauty of Taiwan. So for one, the geology, basic geology, we know that there are three, three rock types, igneous rocks, which are like, we can think probably they were the first rock. These rocks formed from a melted magma or lava. This thing is from Green Island, Liu Dao. If you didn't know, Green Island and Lan Yu are both volcanic islands. And then there's also sedimentary rocks, right? So they go up layer by layer. Sedimentary rocks, sedimentary rocks, I think are the ones that are best at telling a story because sedimentary rocks, you can think about every single thing on this earth, like even mountains, Mount, not all mountains are gonna be so tall. Everything is being worn away by rain, wind, like everything is kind of breaking down and breaking into smaller and smaller pieces. Like every mountain is gonna get broken down. Those little bits of rock which get breaking down get carried either by rivers, by landslides. They get carried into a place where they finally stop resting. Imagine like a river is like the rock bus. So like these kind of can like take you back in time. And these are like kind of like storybooks. I think sedimentary rocks are the best at telling stories. I don't know anything about rocks, but I, even I can see that this must be jade. Yes, this is yes. jade. This is the best, like this is what I think Taiwan is most famous for are its metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have been basically twice cooked. A rocks that have been squeezed and heated up, like put into an oven. But imagine being put into a pressure cooker and like rebaked. It's like imagine taking like a, a brownie and a cookie and you stuff that in a pressure cooker oven and you come out and you get metamorphic rocks. So these two things that already existed, right? And then they, they form new things. So yes, so this is what Hualien is all about, is but Taiwan jade. Like, it's here like, in Hualien. This is like the biggest piece of jade like I've ever seen. So you just found this on land, like the street yes, of Hualien? Yes, not in the streets, not on the street, up okay. in the rivers. I found this in a river in Hualien, right in my, pretty much in my backyard. I think Taiwan's most famous, most unique products of Taiwan is this jade right here, because it is not just super hard, super green, super pretty. It is also, geologically speaking, the youngest discovered jade on the planet. But, but, like, like, so 
it is like are we is this illegal like, can you just go Did I have this in my hand right now you just like go up and just like take a piece of jade let's let's get this straight here i'm not i'm not going up into the river with my hammer and with my axe and i'm carving at a wall right no i'm not doing that all okay. of this stuff was found in a riverbed this is for me i'm not trying to sell this to anybody even though a piece like this could be worth maybe like 4000 5000 ntd but yeah so you yourself you Viewer at home, you can come to Taiwan, you can come to Hualien and find your own cute little piece of jade. What are the chances that you would like accidentally find jade? Like, do you, is it like, do you need to know exactly where to look? Okay, so I can, I, I can show you, and this is eventually going to be a published book, hopefully trying to turn this into my own rock guide. So where you would find jade is more south, south of Hualien, um, mm -hmm. mostly how, rivers. How would you know that? But can you just can you just walk in an area and like this is most likely jade mm. like like from without doing the research and yes. like just being there can you just like analyze and say most likely you will find this type of rock here but like a few kilometers over there might be another rock yes jade only exists in a few places in Hualien there's only these small enclaves of where jade is you just in Hualien so just like just west coast like Taipei no you will not find jade there so like something like this where it's super dark green mm. this is kind of rare this is harder this is harder to find this took me I went up the river many many times and like hunted for jade until I found this thing so this is not this is not common so one question like I'm still like you said it was only like found in like Hualien mm -hmm. so you're saying like you cannot find jade at Jade Mountain. No, you no? cannot find jade in Jade Mountain. This is just this is just like a tourist scam. <laughs> oh man, is that what we're saying now? Oh man, I I don't think I would ever say that. I mean, because jade and its sense is beautiful, right? Jade is beautiful and jade is valuable. So okay. you could say like so you could call jade, jade Mountain in the, sense of in the like... metaphorical sense, oh, right? Okay. That it's it's like jade is so much be it's beautiful like a piece of jade. Bringing a flashlight is a good way to find out if it's jade or not because if it's translucent or semi-translucent, it's and it's green more than likely a piece of jade. But don't take too many, all right? Take take like one. Take like one that you really like, or two. This is for educational purposes here, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a jade sales person. This is like magnetic. Yeah, this is a mag. This is called serpentinite. This is another. So serpentinite, you'll see this all around on the streets of Taipei. Anything on the sidewalks or on the walls, like any sort of like any rectangles that like line the walls or the sidewalks. And cities all around Taiwan are this black and green and they have these white lines going through it. That is likely this stuff, serpentinite. This is also Taiwan Jade's mommy, you could say. Mm -hmm. Taiwan Jade comes from this rock. You know, indigenous folks use nephrite for tons of different jewelry, weapons, and lots of tools, lots of different tools. And it was also tr used this as a trading material throughout Southeast Asia. There's actually some 3000 year old artifacts that were found in Vietnam, in Malaysia, in Thailand, those 3,000 year old earrings and other jade artifacts all came from Hualien. Really? Phong Tien area. So it basically says that there was some sort of ancient cross ocean trading system that, that was underway 3,000 years ago, at least with, with the Philippines in Taiwan or the indigenous folks in Taiwan and then from the Philippines spread out throughout of Southeast Asia. And you can learn all about that too if you come to Hualien or follow Taiwan Rock Guy. <laughs> <laughs> for geologist's perspective, Taiwan is really unique for, I guess, three reasons. One, how it formed. Taiwan formed in a very unique way with two continents colliding into each other. Its formation is uh, super unique. This is big, Eurasia, the continent of Eurasia. This here is the water level. This is a, this is the ocean bottom, this ocean floor. Taiwan, majority of the rocks in Taiwan, the majority of Taiwan is down here. And this is the, uh, this is the coast of the continent of Eurasia, right? And so Taiwan, a lot of Taiwan stuff is down here, which is just said sediments like mud. You got the Philippine ocean plate, which is on top of the Philippine ocean plate were a chain of volcanic islands, which is what Liu Dao and Lan Yu are made out of. They're crawling in from the southeast and they're coming in they're encroaching they're encroaching they're encroaching and a collision happened underneath the ocean and this collision is what they push together they squeeze together they squeeze together and and this ocean sediments rose up and created 
a mountain range. So, it's, so this is so if you can think about <laughs> this is my thesis. I'm just folding. <laughs> I feel like, but I need I need to use tools. A lot of Taiwan, majority of Taiwan is deep ocean rocks, which are now make up the majority of mountain ranges, like the like the mud, like the slate, right. and then the east coast of Taiwan, right here is that the Philippine Ocean Plate, which kind of s slapped on to the eastern part of Taiwan and pushed this stuff up. So all the force that's happening is coming from the east. So like Taiwan is basically pushed. So it's like Taiwan is not from like the same plate. Um, Taiwan is like two different plates. Taiwan is a combination of an ocean plate and a continent plate. About 80% of Taiwan is used to be continental ocean sediment and ocean mud. And then if it wasn't for the ocean plate, there would be no Taiwan. So if you know the ocean plate is what now makes up the coastal range. So the, the coastal mountain range that's that strands from Hualien to Taidong. That came in and essentially pushed the rest of Taiwan into the sky. Oh wow. And so so if you can imagine like this book is the continental plate and this little book is the ocean plate. That's kind of how Taiwan is separated out. You could also use your left hand to kind of imagine Taiwan. My thumb is Eastern Taiwan, in my, which is the f ocean plate. And the rest, majority of my hand is, you know, the rest of Taiwan, which is continental plate. But if it wasn't for this little thumb here, pushing in and squeezing all these rocks upwards, there would be no Taiwan. We're constantly pushing on it too, because these plates are constantly slowly moving and that's what will cause an earthquake. So that's why Taiwan has earthquakes. With every earthquake, Taiwan is higher just a little bit, by like a, maybe like a half a millimeter. Oh, right. Every earth, every earthquake is pushing Taiwan up higher and higher and higher. But with all these typhoons and with earthquakes as well, it's also bringing Taiwan down. You have landslides, rock falls. So er earthquake is always pushing together. Is is like it's never here. Like, here in in Taiwan, an earthquake is happening because two plates are at odds and the, the Philippine ocean plate is pushing towards, pushing towards the continent of Eurasia. And how fast, really started rising out of the ground around 4.5 million years ago. 4.5, but that's like. It doesn't tell me anything. I know, I know, but that's like, okay, here about, here's about this. You take the age of the earth, right? You take the entire age of the earth. So, so and so 4.8, something many, many billion years. And you take that and you shrink it down into 24 hours, four million years is like three seconds. So Taiwan is a extremely young island, young, young island. And so that's why it's so crazy with all the landslides and we're in a tropical area. So this place is not only being risen up out of the ground, it's also being berated by typhoon after typhoon after typhoon. Taiwan's landscape not only changes year to year, decade to decade, the entire riverbed can change in a day. And so all this stuff that I saw before is completely buried, but now new rocks are exposed. So Taiwan, especially the anywhere you go in the mountains or on the East Coast, it's gonna be different every time you go. And then also the unique metamorphic rocks. So those are like the main three things that Taiwan is pretty much a playground for geologists. And if you want to know even more about this uh, geographical playland of Taiwan, you should definitely head over to Jimmy's playground of Taiwan Rock Guy. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with Alice in like, ends with S, ends with subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one. Wow. <laughs> Look at L with like, S, and subscribe. That's good. <laughs>